afternoon my lovely friends and happy Monday! I hope you're all having a lovely start to this new week. You join me today for part two in making a lovely motor match box quilt. Oh my gosh I said it right. So here is where we left off last night. I made the block and I basted it just really quickly with the batting and the backing. Today we're going to hand quilt it using the embroidery floss that came with the kit and then we're going to finish it with the binding. So I was just having a little bit of a think of how I was going to attempt this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little trusty hair marker to just mark the lines that I'm going to quilt so that one I have a nice straight line that I can follow and then I can also just space out all of the lines that they've sort of suggested to put onto the quilt to top. You can see in the picture that's on the panel these are all the quilted lines that they're suggesting to do and then after that I'm actually going to baste it with pins I was going to spray baste it but I'm just going to pin it today I'm doing the pins second because I can't quite draw a line with pins in the way so draw the line first and then pin it with the uh, quilting pins and then we'll get quilting because this is a stranded thread I think I'm just going to split it in half yeah, so I'm using just three strands at a time, and that should give a nice sort of quilty texture, I think. Or maybe I should just use two. No, we'll use three. Why not? Let's just do that. The needle that I'm going to use, I don't have any proper quilting needles, I don't think. No, I only have embroidery needles. So I'm just going to use that. So I'm just going to use these needles. These are size 7 embroidery needles. I use these for everything. And for those of you interested, I keep them all in this lovely little needle book that I actually did a tutorial for. It's linked below and everywhere else if you are interested in making one yourself. But it has these little pages that you can put your needles in and it's super super handy. I used to have my needles just floating around everywhere in my sewing room but now that I have one of these everything related to needles are all in here and it's quick to find. So uh, I'm gonna mark my lines, we'll baste it and then we'll get stitching. And there we go, pin basted and we've also marked the lines with the hair marker. You can see that there's just a really nice subtle line there. Now we are ready to quilt. Ooh. If you can hear it, don't mind the dryer going off in the background. I had to quickly run outside and take the washing off the line because it started raining. So it got slightly wet, it was just about dry and then of course it had to rain and ruin everything. But in the meantime, I've been doing some hand quilting and loving every second of it. It's so much fun. This is what I've done so far. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. I love the texture that it brings to it. I am in no way an expert. I've got a very little clue of what I'm actually doing. All I can remember from what I learnt when I first tried it was you need to do like a rocking method. So the needle needs to go straight in and then almost straight up again so you're sort of like rocking the needle back and forth so you get that really nice even stitch I'm trying to do that uh -huh. it looks good on the front I haven't looked at the back oh, there are missed stitches on the back but nobody's gonna see that I have realized I've also needed to use a thimble on my little middle finger because that's where I'm pushing the needle through and it's very very sore so I have one of these clover, it's called a coin thimble, it's just like a leather thimble and it's got the metal bit on the top and it fits perfectly on that finger and I just use that to sort of push it through and it helps. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this first half and then I'll show you what I do with the second half and I have to say having marked out the lines with the hair marker has helped tremendously because otherwise I would just be going off kilter all over the place and these lines would just look awful. So if you want to give this a go or are interested in doing any sort of hand quilting and want to keep it straight and nice and neat then invest in a hair marker and it will make everything a lot better. I'm so inspired to hand quilt a quilt now. I mean, it would take forever. And, oh, 
might be so impatient, but I think it'd be a really cool thing to do. It's a good goal to sort of have, to hand quilt a quilt. First half is done, and I'm really happy with it. It looks super sweet. It didn't take that long either, so we should get this done quite quickly. Just made a knot, and I'll just bring up the thread up the top there. And then from there, I just go in and out and in and out. Just push the needle and thread through with the thimble. Pull it through. And there we have the beginning of our stitch. And then we just continue doing that along the whole line. Just up and down, in and out, and through. Where does it go this way? There we go. Oh, I'm super happy with it. It's very, very cute. I think it looks amazing. Yay. Okay, so time to do the binding. Usually when I do a quilt top, I like to trim uh, all of this off around the edge of the quilt uh, before putting the binding on. But I think with this one, I'm actually going to put the binding on first and then trim it away because of how like easy these stitches are going to come out if I do cut them first. So yeah, I'd rather just stitch the binding on first and then cut. So that's what I'll do. But first I'm going to prep this binding. I'm just going to cut all of the white sort of bit around it off and then press it in half like I do a normal double binding. And then we'll sew it on. Gosh, it is the sweetest thing. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. I love it so much. <laughs> wow, I'm so happy with that. And the back looks great too. Oh, I love it. Yes. Okay, so I'm about to go have my dinner. But after dinner, I will sit down and stitch the binding to the back. It shouldn't take too long. And then our lovely little quilt will be finished. It's come to my favourite time of the day. Time to sit in front of the TV with a quilt on. And uh, today's quilt is this one here. This is my Jacob's Ladder quilt that I made 2012, I think. It was a long time ago, but it is like a nostalgic favourite. You can't really quite see it because of the light, but yes it's my favorite and it's huge and big and cuddly and lovely so this is my lounge quilt at the moment this quilt is made out of all denise schmidt prints and then on the back i lined it with more fabric as well i love it so much oh, i'm so snug yes i have um, a cup of tea to hand i have my little matchstick quilt to be sewn the binding uh, as I mentioned, it won't take me that long. An hour, maybe. I will do that while I watch some TV. And here we have it. She's all finished and looking beautiful. I love it so much. I'm super happy with how it turned out. It is the cutest thing. There's the back. 
and the front. So I think I'm going to put this up on the wall here behind my sewing desk. I've seen some really cool photos on Instagram where people put lots of different little mini quilts and blocks and things up on one wall and it looks really cool. I'm inspired to do that uh, to my wall uh, here where my sample is. I think we'll look into doing that over this year I think because I really enjoyed doing like a little block like mini quilt type thing super fun and I really enjoyed hand quilting it too it is by far not perfect but I'm happy with it and that's all that matters so yay thank you all very much for joining me today I hope you have a lovely Monday and I will see you again tomorrow bye 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 bye